Hey, that's it. Nice, another nope. episode in the books. That's it. Nice job, man. That nice. was fun. Yeah, I'm I'm starving though right now. You're oh. starving, dude. I'm always starving. All right. Well, what do you want to do? What are you feeling? Um, it's it's late. How about let's do let's do takeout. Take and you out? Know, yeah, okay. you pick. I don't care. I'm, All right. I'm not picky right now. Well, now that you say that, I orange chicken sounds great right okay. now. I I think I think I'm gonna order some Chinese food. Whoa, who the f*** are you? What have you done with Tyler? Tyler? <laughs> Tyler, that pro-American, gun-toting, white supremacist Nazi? No, that's not me. What's up? I'm Kale. Okay, Kale, Tyler and I were talking about having Chinese food. What do you think of that? <laughs> Absolutely not. You guys eat Chinese food? Have you even seen what you look like? <laughs> I look like a white guy, but I can eat Chinese food if I want. God, uncultured. All right, well, maybe something else. Yeah, um, what else? Oh, Indian food. Oh, have you ever had Indian food? I'd like to tonight. No, no, you don't touch it. You don't have it. I had it once, and I, I had it in New Delhi. It was amazing. God, we did a sacrifice of Shiva afterwards, and I had to atone for my sins for eating Indian food. So, no, no, no Indian food. Okay, well, arugula guy. No, no, I'm Kale. Arugula is my sister. All right, whatever, Kale. I'm I'm hungry. I want to eat something. That's fine. But propose something that you want to eat within your own cultural boundary. Well, I, everyone loves tacos and burritos, so well, some you, Mexican food? Nope, absolutely not. <laughs> I don't eat Mexican food because I'm not contributing by having a taco or a burrito. Oh, my gosh. Bro, man, you're, you're killing me right now. Romain? Yo, Romain, that's my cousin. He's up in Bend, Oregon. What's up? Uh, I'm not a fan of this guy. I want to eat something other than, like, ice cube sandwiches, whatever you think is appropriate. Okay, let me explain something to you. Cultural appropriation is what I learned in college in an hour-long meditation drum vision circle with kombucha tea. I was enlightened for weeks because we were thinking about what the world was like without the word Trump. And then we learned about not stealing from other people's culture. Close your mouth, you'll catch flies. Listen, cultural appropriation is wrong, and we shouldn't do it. I'm Kale. Oh, man, I'm glad you're back. Yeah, that, ca that kale guy was here. You, know, you ordered kale for dinner? No, a kale guy. It was, it was a guy sitting right there. His name is Kale. Yeah. Wait, wait, hey. hold on. A human being like me, and yes. his name is Kale. He said, he said, pronounce, he said, spelled with a C, pronounced with a K. He was a real guy. Wow. I I feel bad for him because like he probably got bullied for that name. His parents are like let's let's get our son to make sure he's bullied. We'll name him Kale. I'm like wow. Yeah. He 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 just kept going on well, about. What did you order for dinner? Oh, nothing. Why? I was trying to do Indian food after he rejected Chinese food. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Even, oh, he doesn't like Chinese food? Who doesn't like not like Chinese food? Yeah, he rejected that because cultural appropriation. And oh, then even, that's, that's why he's not eating it? Yeah. Because of cultural appropriation? Even Mexican food. My eyes are rolling back. Into, even Mexican food? Yes. Bro, burritos and tacos? and I love burritos. And all that stuff? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's oh, not speaking, good for him. Cultural appropriation, speaking of burritos, did you hear about those Portland, Portlandians, Portlanders? I don't know what we call them. The two female Portland business owners who went to, like, Pueblo, Mexico. Oh, yes. And well, they, they got, like, some of the recipes of the authenticity of, like, that, that area for their burritos. And, well, then they got canceled for making uh, a food of truck course. over it. Cultural exchanges aren't, aren't allowed to happen, apparently. <laughs> like, who knows if it was, like, the exact recipe. Maybe they added something to it. Maybe they had a secret sauce. But then, like, all the Portlanders were all, like, Writing Yelp reviews like that's stealing. What are those women getting in return? I'm thinking, they're, like, shut up, you're getting burritos. Are they man. white women? Yeah, they were white women. Oh, they were up in arms about that because they're making burritos, I'm sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Where does it end? Where does this cultural appropriation end? With food? No. It's, that's like that's it, like where the starting point. It gets further into like fashion and ideas. Have you seen like the one clip with the Vice? All the enlightened Vice News people talking to you about cultural appropriation. Have you seen that? Oh, no, I haven't seen that. <laughs> okay. I'm not, I'll spare you the whole thing, but like, let me show you a clip here. I would describe cultural appropriation as taking something that has cultural, spiritual significance and stealing from it.
cultural appreciation is when you actually like work with the people from the culture that you're like taking something from. I'm inspired by this and I also want to contribute to this culture as well. So what happened to embracing cultures? That's what's going on there. I mean, I thought that was the foundation of America. Like on the back of our currency, it says E pluribus unum out of many one. I mean, geez, yeah. that... We're the great melting pot. Exactly. We're Exchanging the, ideas. We're the least homo homogenous country in the entire world. I mean, literally the Statue of Liberty says everybody come. That's the whole thing. It's like we welcome everybody, but let's be Americans first. And how do you have so many different cultures and then you don't want to assimilate? Like... And or, or appreciate other cultures. Like I don't, I don't see how that happens. And we have plenty of people that want to de do what these other cultures do. They imitate it. It's the sincerest form of flattery. Absolutely. I mean that that's a that's a good point. But I mean that is so true. Imitation is the sincerest form of fl uh, flattery. Yeah. And talking talking about earlier the food with the burritos and stuff. Oh yeah, that's right. I ordered the burritos. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. We we go we go other places. We want to learn about how they make food, and they're we want to bring it to us. Absolutely. Bring all these, these different customs around the world and, and fashion. All those things can be verboten, though, if you don't do it the right way. Right. Or, hey, you can't wear that hat. Or, hey, you can't wear that particular thing. Like that one girl who, I don't know, she wore like a Japanese dress to prom and is like, no, you can't do that because you're white. Like, oh, yeah. what if she admires it and she really likes the Japanese culture? No, you're stealing. It's theft. Right. Oh, get over yourself. And it, uh, tattoos and Come on, they, there's plenty of people that here that just admire the Japanese culture and, and Asian culture and in general, the anime, everyone, that's huge. Gosh, Netflix has a whole category to anime, but I guess you have to be Japanese in order to watch that and appreciate it. Yeah, and that she, she wore that to prom, it kind of goes with those costumes that come up around Halloween each year. Oh yeah, there's a lot of outrage lately about that. It, you can't wear other people's... Uh, yeah, it's, it's forbidden, how dare you? The Teen Vogue did a little video on that. you're making fun of it. I don't know if you saw that video that Teen Vogue talked about it. Oh, no. I don't normally get my information from Teen Vogue, but yeah. All right, yeah, let's watch yeah, that. Let see it. Cultural appropriation is theft. Cultural appropriation is taking aspects of another person's culture and using them mainly completely out of context. Members of a dominant group borrow elements from a marginalized group while actively erasing the people of that culture and diminishing the meanings of what we practice. The majority of us know that blackface is cultural appropriation, but that is how I view and how my people in the indigenous community view this costume. We have endured a history of being pushed into the background that even in Hawaii, where I'm from, that we're still a minority in what is and has been our homeland. Oh my gosh. I... I... I like the one where she's just kind of like going off and like clearly reading from like a teleprompter or something. It is yeah. when a, but <laughs> what is it? Dominant group, uh, something uh, about uh, a, oppresses, oppresses a marginalized group and, and erases, erases them in the process because these are not my own thoughts. <laughs> so wearing a Halloween costume erases another culture. That's yeah. just by doing that. No more Pocahontas. No more. Hey, I, I've even seen kids come to the door one time with addresses a Chick-fil-A person. Is that offensive? No. Like, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, just, I don't know. It's like, it's, I, I listen, <laughs> just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right. And you can choose to let things bother you or you can choose to not let them bother you. And I personally don't give a crap if somebody wants to dress like Pocahontas or dress, I don't know, as a leprechaun. Are yeah. we going to offend the Irish now? Yeah. Well, well actually, there, the, there was that movie, White Chicks, where the Wayans brothers, they go undercover in the Hamptons. They dress up. What as, year was that? White year, oh, oh, that's got to be two, before 2010. Yeah, I've never seen several it. Several years ago. It was hilarious. So it's black guys dress up in whiteface? Yeah, they're making fun of white people. It was funny. I had, I, I had no problem with I that. really don't care. I really like, enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't care because I have thick skin and, I mean, whatever. Have fun. I, I really don't care if, yeah. if that happens. Because people get wrapped up too emotionally in it. That one, that one young lady on there complaining about the, the hula skirts. How accurate does that have to be, those skirts, for the luau parties that are all out there? I yeah. guess that's not allowed yeah, anymore. Because, yeah, you know what? If you're white, Hispanic, black, or Asian, no more luau parties for you. You can't do no it. No more pig rust, no more lays. Ultimately, these people, they live very easy lives where they don't have as much adversity. And so because they, they don't have the issues of maybe starvation or finding water or living in a war-torn country, they have to be upset about something. That's the way I see it, because if you're going to let somebody 
who's wearing a dress or or uh, appreciate something of a culture that and you take that as, as like a negative that that's in your issue i mean even with hair and when take it to the extreme you see it like at the college level like this clip you're saying that i can't work, have a hairstyle because of your culture yeah. why do you know I was in Egyptian culture? Are you Egyptian? No, nah, but I'm not. Are you, no. Are you Egyptian? No, but doesn't you, matter. Wait, where's Egypt? Tell me. You know what, girl? Where's Egypt? Dude, go. You have no oh, right to tell me Ooh, what I can wear. Huh? Where's Egypt? Yo, girl, stop touching me right now. Yo, girl, stop touching me right now. Did you hear what she said at the beginning? She asked her friend, like, do you have any scissors? Oh, yeah. That's that's crazy. <laughs> I can't believe somebody actually has the audacity to say, I just, I just, I, I'm going to cut your hair because that's my culture. Who are you? That's a form of racial superiority right there. Hmm. Very interesting. Racial superiority. Do explain. Yeah. She's just and saying that my, this belongs to my culture from, from Africa that she cited, oh, where's Egypt from? And the poor, poor kid was just like, just, you have not, you have no right to tell me how to wear my hair. How, yeah. And as he's going away, she? as he's going away, she's like grabbing him and mocking him. Like literally mocking him. Yeah, like, like, excuse a, me, this is college and you're acting like a four-year-old? Like a schoolyard bully. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good way to put it. Like four years old, you're acting this way just because you're upset because he has, I mean. Dreadlocks? I, I just, I can't wrap my head <laughs> around it. I don't know why you get so, you know what? This has been going on for a long time. This has been. I mean, really since the beginning of time, people have been sharing culture. I mean, geez, yeah. the Silk Road for crying out loud, you have. This giant road going through all of Asia, going all the way out towards Egypt, and you have everybody in between just on this massive road w with sharing animals and spices and herbs and meats and clothes and ideas and religions and all intermingling. And so yeah, that culture exchange powered the world economy. It really did. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it's just really cool because like people in Egypt, they got to experience dyes to change their clothes or different types of herbs and spices that really made their food great. And do you think there was somebody like who was upset back then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> somebody like off to the side be like, hey, when your friends try this salt, you tell them where you got it from. Yeah. You guys better owe me something for it. I'm sure they were worried about more important things, not being attacked by a tiger on the Silk Road or something. Yeah, or I don't know, crazy, awful weather or starvation or I don't know, war or yeah, real struggle, back real, then. real struggle that these people don't face today. And so ultimately I think that's where it, it, I don't know. I don't know. It's more of like a college thing, I think. And I think it's stupid. It's, I think it's ridiculous. A vocal minority is definitely pushing. This. I really think that I think it is a vocal minority and uh, I just, I can't wrap my head around it. I'll never understand. I appreciate culture. And if I like something that another culture does and I admire it, well, yeah, Call it cult cultural appropriation, then get offended. I don't care. I'm happy to embrace other cultures, ideas, and customs, and, and food especially. Absolutely. Yeah, where is that burritos? I hope it's coming soon. Yeah. But really, off topic, oh, yeah, uh, Logan was telling me earlier that he got the website up and running. Oh, yeah, thecoursecorrect.com. Yeah. So you nice. Can put yeah, in he your, was talking to me about that. Yeah, you can put in your email address and to get notified when videos come up and subscribe to our newsletter and all that. Yeah, I think we got a blog Links. coming. That's going to be a lot of work, but yeah. uh, hopefully that'll be a lot of d discussion for like historical topics and where people can rant because yeah. we love free speech. Even if we disagree, we we love to hear you. And it's all those videos and uh, all the links to all our videos and our links to our social media and stuff. And statistics and stuff, yeah. Hopefully we can get more likes and subscribers on social media and all that stuff. Oh. oh, was that it? The burritos are here? Dude, oh, bur man. It's burrito-ito time. Yes. Let's I'm do it. Culturally appropriate some burritos. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>